hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel i hope all of you are doing good so in this video we are going to talk about all the required documents which are necessary for foreign studies and the procedures and the processes from which you have to pass for getting a fully funded scholarship so in this video there will be a presentation by my friend olofemi Olofemi is a graduate research assistant in Canada and doing his master's. So he will be guiding all of you about his experience and uh, and he will share his suggestions with you with the help of hope so you can also get a fully funded position like him. So I would like to request Olofemi to, to share his screen and start his presentation. Hello everyone. You're, you're welcome to Amza's YouTube channel once again. Uh, thank you for joining us. Th thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing the videos. Please continue to share the videos. Uh, so today uh, I'll be discussing about documents that you need for graduate study abroad, wherever you are all over the world and you think of studying in North America, US, Canada, these are the documents that you will need. So I'll be talking about them one after the other. Then I will give you a rundown on the importance of studying in Canada, the benefits you get in terms of the visa processes after your, your study, what you stand to gain after your study and every other thing. So follow me on this, on this ride. So firstly, one of those things that you need um is your transcripts um if you are you are done you are finished uh, your undergraduate course um in any of any any discipline you have to have your transcript because it is an important document that the um the school you're coming to will will need to check your academic records your past academic record. So the transcripts gives them an overview of what you did in your undergraduate and your performance in those, those courses. And when sending emails to um to your potential supervisors, uh, you can also attach your transcripts and your academic CV to the email so that if the potential supervisor checks the email, you can you know have a little knowledge about about you, um, and with that you stand a chance to be selected, and eventually come over to 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 Canada to, to study for your MSc or PhD, as the case may be. So you will need your transcripts, you need your undergraduate certificates. That's also a, a essential too, because those are one of the documents that that shows that yes, actually you finished, um, from the course or the school you claimed that, that you finished. So it's, it's, a, it's an important document that you, that you must have. And another document is your academic CV. So CV I've been asked these questions several times on CV or resume, as the case may be. Um, the, the format or the setup of your academic CV is different from the ones that is obtainable in Canada or, or in US. Different countries have their their, um, their templates or they have um, different forms by which they construct their resume. So you must be able to understand those, the one for Canada or how they structure their their resume, especially when it comes to academics, uh, your CVs or resume. So you must structure your resume that it captures your your values, your quality. It captures everything that you've been doing in years past. So that if anybody picks up your resume, that person will have um the knowledge or a brief history of what you have been doing in, in the past. And this will also help you to sell yourself to be marketable because you are not the only person that might be sending emails to that professor you know so 
if the person has like take for instance five candidates uh do you understand so you will screen those uh, CVs and know the one that is suitable for for his lab so the work your work is must be you must take the academic CV or resume very very importantly because it is it is an integral part of your graduate school uh, application even after you get chosen by your um, potential supervisor the school will also request you to send your academic CV so you can see that the CV is very important it is an important document that you must make sure that everything must be top notch in doing it and again you need your international passport it, it is also very important that you have this um with you because you can never fail i don't know how fast it is to get a uh, passport in, in, in your countries but in my, in my country in nigeria it's kind of difficult it can take like three to four five months sometimes six months for you to get a passport and what if you get an admission during those times and you are trying to apply for a visa and your passport is, is not forthcoming. So you must make sure that you get your passport as soon as possible. That eventually when you get admission and you're applying for your visa, it will, it will not be an an, an insurance um to hit. Another thing is you getting professional certific certifications. This is also very important um in in your it's it looks looks good on your CV. It also adds to your to your value and shows the kind of person that you, that you have. You know, if you are in different, I know different fields in tech, in um, in agriculture, in um, back in in finance, in accounting, different fields they have their own certifications. So you must also, to a large extent, strive to get this certification because this certification tells that yes, you are. Um, good, you are eligible, you you are up to date with what's happening in your in your field. So I want to advise that everybody that wants to go for um that wants to apply or wants to go for graduate st studies, especially fully funded scholarships, make sure you, you get as many as possible professional cert cert certifications. And uh, most importantly, some some of these certifications can be done online. You know they, they they can run from um short courses on Coursera on U Udemy on Future Lens on EDX you can find courses that are related to your field on these um learning platforms and er enroll for them and to a large extent it will look good on your CV and because it shows that you have the up to date information on what's happening on innovations on your particular field and again one thing again that you must also have is recommendation letters uh depending on this the school but most likely most schools will always will always ask for recommendation letters from from your uh, previous professors or supervisors in the past so you must have you must create a very good cordial relationship with your undergraduate supervisor or lecturers in your school so that eventually when you need them to do this for you, they'll be willing to, to do that for you. So it is very important. It's also part of the requirement or yeah, that you need for admission in most schools in Canada. You must have a recommendation letter, whether it's master's, whether it's PhD, you must have this. Another thing is standardized tests, which I put here yeah, optional. So this like um take for instance people coming from non-speaking non-english speaking countries that wants to come to canada it is required that you have written english tests um like ilts profile just to ascertain that yes you are a good english speaker because you'll be taught in english in graduate school in canada you know so it is very important that you have this this test but it is if you are coming from a country that speaks english as english is their first language or second language as, as the case may be and you are quite proficient you can some some schools with um english test 
for some for some applicants in some countries. So you have to find out if your country is also part of those countries that uh, English tests are being waived. So it is very important you you check that. But another test is GRE or, or GMAT for those people that are going into accounting, into um, probably an MBA, uh, Master's in Business Administration, they might need a GMAT or a, or a GRE, it might be one of those requirements. So if you, if you have those results, it will also help you to also um, <clears throat> help you in admission. Uh, so that is just some of those documents that you need. If you have any questions, just drop it on, on, the, uh, on the channel. Amzat will answer you, or if you have anything again to, I can always come back to make more clarifications on on it. So the the next question is why study in Canada? Like what is what is the essence of coming to Canada? What what do you stand to, what what do you stand to gain when you when you come to Canada? It is it is very important that. It is very important to know the kind of country that you are, that you are, that you are going to. Like, like I wrote here, Canada is the home for the world's top academic institutions. Sorry. So Canada is is home to the world's top academic institutions and universities. Canada is ranked amongst the top 10 countries in the world by the UN in the case of quality of life insurance. Canada is known for its excellent ed educational institutes, multiplicity of top quality educational programs in various streams and developed economy that welcomes international students with open, open arms. So, what what I can say is that Canada is 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 built from immigrants. Like it's a very diverse country. So everybody from wherever you are, all over the world, you are always welcome. As long as you have what it takes to come in terms of scaling the order of getting admission and getting fully funded, Canada is the is a destination for for study. And no, no wonder the university institutions here are ranked as the best, top, top best universities to study anywhere in the world. And the quality of life here is, is good, is, is amazing. So, and Canada will give you that exposure that you need in your field. That's the modern day technologies that you can think of in your field that you can learn and, and on not theory talking about practical yeah so it is important that uh so that those are one of those um those qualities of coming to canada to study it is it is the, the destination every everybody is welcome with open open hands irrespective of who you are you are always welcome and it's a very good place to to study so and the next on my slide is the best reasons to study, study in Canada. Like, I just want to go specific now. Like, what are, because saying it is the best means like, it's more like generic. Like, so we are going to the basics now, like individually, what what are the best reasons why you should come to Canada to study? Number one, like, like I mentioned uh, the other time, uh, Canada is, it has a very easy and quick visa processes, even though for the COVID that uh, disrupted a lot of things that, you know, um, IRCC had a lot of backlog of applications, but now it's not easy enough. If if you apply for your study permit or your study visa within a week or two, you might get approved or, or yeah, approved as case may be. So it is now, Quick um or fast to to process visa, low tuition fee compared to other countries. The industrial internship opportunities are enormous. Top brands, top companies have their their branches in Canada, 
and you will have that exposure in your field of study. And they have internationally recognized degrees. It's, it's a very high tech country. I the living standard is is awesome. It's high. It's a safe place to study. You can be rest assured that you don't have any injuries in, in, in study. Possibility to work in Canada after graduation. One of uh, so I let me talk more on, on this. Maybe in our su subsequent videos we'll talk about post graduate work um permits. Like if you come for a master's or your PhD, you are if you study in a DLI. So this is government um designated learning institution. You are entitled to to have a three years post graduate work permit. Canada offers that. So after you graduate, you still have that or that opportunity to 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 work in industry. Excuse me, as in as, as case may be, and it also has a very good pathway, easy way to to PR, which is permanent residence. Like I said in our previous videos, like one of those one of those things that Canada is 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 using to attract talents all over the world is the ease of getting permanent residence. It's quite seamless. It's easy to trans to transit from a temporary visa um, applicant to a permanent residence. Canada affords you that opportunity. And again, the provisions, there are about 10 provisions in Canada and uh, three or three or two territories, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. There's a law of diversity. You can be rest assured that you are coming to a safe place and a, a place that is that is good you know, to learn and to network. Another thing I want to discuss is just to uh, emphasize on the quick, easy visa processes. Like I said earlier, um, Canada uh, I, IRCC they've introduced very easy, quick student visa um, processes to, for students coming to Canada. It's now faster, like unlike it was before. So you can also uh, look look at that low low tuition fee, like I mentioned the other time. So these are just one of those um reasons why Canada is 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 the best like best decision to be to study. Whether you are you are coming, to, you know, you are coming to pay or you are coming on fully funded scholarships. Canada is always the place to be for your tertiary education. I hope I've been able to explain a lot of things that you don't understand before. If you have questions, suggestions, uh, recommendations, drop it in the comments um, section and we'll be glad to answer them appropriately. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Please, I want to beg us that we should subscribe to this channel, um, share this video to in, in your departmental or anywhere your workspace to people that want to have the interest, you know, to come to Canada. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you, Olufemi, for a nice, wonderful presentation. I hope all of the viewers will get a lot of information and they will make some mindset and some plan for preparation of these documents and i hope someday they will say like they get motivation from you and from these videos to start their process by getting information so here i would like to request all of me like in upcoming days would you please appear again on this channel and make some presentation like for those people who are preparing CV, cover letter, SOP, motivation letter, like these are those fundamental documents which are required by students. Would you please appear again on this channel and help the upcoming students? Uh, yes, absolutely, I'm, sad. I'm willing and ready to always um, render assistance um, I just believe in raising people, helping people as much as possible because where I am today is, is just by God's grace. It's not it's not by my power. So I'm always happy to extend um 
help extend support, share information to as many people as possible. So I'm I'll I'll be available for that. I'm sorry. So I have one more question. Do you know All right. how every day people ask you or me to give your WhatsApp number so that they can talk with you? So what do you suggest to new students who needs help with preparation of their um, admission application, scholarship application? What is the best way to approach you or any other student for suggestions like through email, through WhatsApp, through Messenger? What do you suggest? Okay, what I would suggest is you can send an email to Amzat or to, to myself. Maybe Amzat will drop my email on the link or I don't know, but you can I'll I'll drop my email with Amzat so you can share my email with you. Uh, so anytime that you, you feel you want more clarifications on some issues, like you said, on SOP, on writing research proposals. We can always when that we are we are also learning too, you know, but as we help people, we also learn, you know, at the same time too, because it's always good to improve oneself. Um so so it's good. So you can reach me through my my, my email. Amzat has it, so you can always share with share with you guys. Okay. I hope everyone will like this video and uh, we will find uh, the find if we will find some questions in comments we will answer them in comments and if you have some important query or some important question you can just send us an email we will try to give you an elaborative response and uh, we are here as uh, all of you have mentioned we are here to help you guys and from your documentation from talking with you we also learn and it also improve our professional skills. Olufemi, I am thankful to you for your precious time and all the efforts you put in preparing the presentation and giving some information to new students. I hope uh, we will see these viewers again in another video and uh, you will see Olufemi again on some other presentation with some other presentations about some fundamental documents in upcoming weeks. So stay tuned. Thank you, Lufemi. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. God bless. Bye.